ipmnation.com. Live from the Transitional Radio Uplink in Cuenca, Ecuador, you're listening to All Natural Being with guest host Henry G. Noel. What's the G stand for? Giddy up on ipmnation.com. Here's Henry. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Sorry about that. Technical stuff on my side. Um, <laughs> welcome to the 345th episode of Brian Brody's All Natural Being, the number one rated show on ipmnation.com and brought to you by Transitional Radio. Now, we are live this evening on ipmnation.com, Transitional Radio Radio's Facebook and YouTube pages with Fly on the Wall video, or as Brian likes to refer to it, his shunt cam, on Facebook and YouTube with rebroadcasts on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and a whole host of others. Now, we're broadcasting live this evening from our international Uplink studio in Cuenca, Ecuador. And we want to thank our good friends at Wirecast for making it possible for us to be broadcasting globally. Now, we also thank our trusted listeners for without you, things would be, well, rather quiet around here this evening. We appreciate those listening live on radio and those listening to our rebroadcasts. And we want to thank our Fly on the Wall video listeners. We do find it far more enjoyable having you participating in the thread and sharing your ideas. So all of our global listeners from the U.S., we'd like to thank Canada, Mexico, UK, Ireland, our good friends right here in Ecuador, China, the Philippines, Brazil, India, Australia, Germany, Italy, France, Nigeria, Turkey, Japan, Singapore, Thailand, Belgium, Sweden, Israel, South Africa, Egypt, Puerto Rico, Kenya, the Netherlands, Colombia, Peru, Greece, Poland, Cambodia, and New Zealand. I want to thank you for investing your time with us. Now, we realize there are many, many options out there where you could spend be spending your time. So thank you for spending it with us. I greatly do appreciate it. It is great to have you here. Now, my name is Henry Noel. I'm guest hosting for the amazing but out of commission Brian Brody. And we are thrilled to be filling in for our virtual hitchhiker. So from our southern garden spot of the mortals, we want you to understand that your life is still your labyrinth. And you, regardless of what you think and believe, get to call all the shots. Now, why subjugate yourself to the whims of others? You were dealt this hand, so why not play it with all the gusto you can muster and play it the way you want to play it? No one should have more control over your life than you. So why, sub why succumb to your critics? Why allow the benefits, the, the beliefs of others to derail you from your own natural being? Don't get caught up in all the BS that others use to demoralize you. Use your primal scream to stand firm and proud, front and center, and do not put yourself in second place. That's why we're here, to be your friendly force, to place your heart's highest priority top of the list, reinstating the true wisdom and wallop of your inner, your inner whisper, to terminate the turbulence in your life, to garnish the guilt and hold on to, that you hold on to and won't let go of and streamline your sensibility so you can face this crazy world head on and out brutal the brutal so you can bring on your bold once and for all and we're trusting everyone has had a good day and we thank you for joining us on this thursday evening where we thought we would just kind of shake things up a little bit we figured brian's not here and he's not listening in so why not you know <laughs> we've been broadcasting all week and we've been telling you how important the two-way communication really is to us. So being this is Thursday, we thought, why not open the thread to you and have your, you voice your opinions on the things that matter most to you? So we're here, uh, for, for, we're gonna start, at least we're gonna attempt to start it tonight and see what happens. Uh, we are doing a free-for-all Thursday. Gratis para todos los jueves where you can get to vent and we get to listen. So let's take a look at the thread. Let's see who's visiting with us this evening and let's see what kind of conversation we can actually get going this evening. So good evening, everybody, and welcome to the show. We greatly appreciate it. Candace, good evening to you. How are you, ma'am? I would really appreciate you being here. 
Uh, Rhea, thank you. Appreciate you being on, Wayne, of course. And uh, it looks like, let's see. Oh, Alice, thank you for being with us this evening. Shane, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, let's see who else we've got. Lots of comments going on. Janelle, well, hello there. I've missed you the last the last day or so, and I'm glad to see you on here. So I'm going. Op I'm opening the floor to y'all. I really want to know what it is that that that's bugging you. That that uh, that that you you think that is what you want to get. Voice your opinion on. And it could be something. It doesn't have to be bad. It doesn't have to be anything that's that's negative. It certainly can be something positive. You know, just want to say thanks to somebody, but. I wanted to open it up to you. I mean, you've listened to me, uh, you know, verbose <laughs> and uh, constantly going at it. So I just want to just open the floors to you all. So if there's something that you want to talk about, and I can't imagine Shane not having something to talk about, uh, Candace, I would appreciate, you know, any input that you may have. So, uh, again, this is going to be a Thursday. We're going to try this out to see how it works because, you know, after a while, you've got to get tired of listening to me talk about all of this cerebral stuff so i'm giving you guys an opportunity to go ahead and 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 entertain the radio audience with with uh, some of the the things you would like to put in the thread and uh so if, if we're gonna get going it'll be great but if not we'll uh take a look and see you know what's been going on um uh let's see we had um a lot of news i know that that's been going on i'm not a big uh news follower um, especially being down here in Ecuador, it, it, it not a lot up there really affects me directly. Uh, not that it's not important, but it just doesn't, uh, you know, we have a lot of other things going on down here with this country. So, um, again, I know there's a lot of issues that have been going on. There's been a lot of politics going on. And so it's just what's on your guys' mind? What would you like to see happen? Uh, what would you like to see changed? Um, how do you feel about the direction that the country's going? How do you see things that um, that are being that to see the things that are affecting you all? And if we don't have too much going on, I'll, I can always bring up a subject if 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 it need be. Um, I was listening to or actually reading an article today um, dealing with well, actually, it dealt with the ethics and 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 of in persuasion that that. Um, Lee and I, we talked about last night, had a good time with that. Um, but it really kind of delves into it. And and it, it really has to do with a, um, a trial that occurred in San Francisco, um, I guess back in August, a groundskeeper for the uh, school district had contracted um, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in 2014 at the age of at the ripe old age of 42 and he brought suit against monsanto because he's a groundskeeper uh, for some one of the school districts in the san francisco bay area and had uh, he was spraying roundup and uh, a similar product called ranger pro and he claimed that this um gave him this this lymphoma non-hodgkin's lymphoma so uh he filed suit in August, the uh, uh, San Francisco jury unanimously said that Monsanto knew or uh, or was aware of the seriousness of the uh, of Roundup, and agree. And they stated that it that, that it had caused his cancer. So they awarded him overall two hundred and eighty nine million dollars in the judgment, two hundred and fifty million in punitive damages, and thirty three million in pain and suffering, and then about a six million dollar actual damages so the jury determined that that the roundup contributed to his cancer and monsanto should have to provide some label warning of a potential health hazard and the jury and the, the groundskeeper story is, was according to the jury it was that the groundkeeper story is tragic and could have been prevented if monsanto actually showed a modicum of care about human safety anyway so uh, that being said um the judge yesterday uh, this was, it was Wednesday. Uh, the judge decided uh, that, well, in essence, she's planning on just looking at the possibility of doing a retrial. Um, that she, let's see, the way it said, um, 
First of all, uh, this hearing that was on Wednesday, ahead of the hearing, Monsanto had argued that the groundskeeper failed to prove that Roundup or similar herbicides caused his lymphoma and presented no evidence that Monsanto executives were malicious in marketing. So in her tentative ruling, the judge wrote that the groundskeeper failed to produce clear and con convincing evidence of malice or oppression by Monsanto. She uh, wrote that uh, he had not provided any evidence that Monsanto employees believed that the exposure to the product caused the lymphoma. So during the hearing, the judge said she was concerned with the improper statements that the groundskeeping, the groundkeeper's attorneys had made during his closing arguments. And so despite the judge's order not to say certain things, the attorney compared Monsanto to the tobacco companies and said company executives would be drinking champagne in their boardroom if the jury sided with the St. Louis-based company. Well, the judge admonished the jury to disregard those comments at the time, but wondered Wednesday if that actually entitled Monsanto to a new trial. So the judge didn't formally rule on any issues after the two-hour hearing to consider Monsanto's demand to toss out the entire jury verdict in the first in the first of thousands of similar cases that are going on across the country. So the judge um, issued a, a tentative uh, issued a written tentative ruling ahead of the hearing saying she intended to strike down the punitive damages and schedule a new trial on that issue. Now, this was all before the hearing. So during the hearing, the judge said she was troubled with the $33 million in non-economic pain and suffering damages. The jury awarded him. So the groundskeeper had argued for $1 million a year for the next 33 years. Well, the argument is that by, by Monsanto lawyers is the groundskeeper's life expectancy is only two years. So why would the jury agree to $33 million, a million dollars a year for 33 years? And so the judge mulled that over out aloud, I guess, and fashioned an order reducing the entire verdict to that she feels should be under $9 million. Anyway, this is part of, of you know, again, we're dealing with, with a product that nobody, you know, all of the testing, all of the stuff that's going on, I, I'm not saying that it's good or bad. I'm just simply saying that, you know, if it's a hazardous material, then then it should be labeled, of course. And, and people need to use common sense when they use it, of course. Uh, so, you know, in dealing with this ethics uh, that we talked about the other day, it's um, I felt it was pretty timely to, 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 to look at that. But that's just something that I had found um, more concerned that um, more concerned that, you know, of what it is that you would like to talk to. So that is just something that I had found on the news. Uh, uh, out of San Francisco. So anything that um, that you guys want to talk about, it would be, it I, would love, I would love it. So please pop up something that you see, something that you feel that uh, would be a beneficial thing to really talk about. And let's talk about it. This is your forum. This is your chance to voice your opinion and keep me quiet, actually, um, which sometimes is not a bad deal. <laughs> so any any comments, any words, any any information based on on what you guys feel uh, is going on in this illustrious world of ours that you feel might be uh, worth talking about. Hi, Joseph. How are you? Dana Lee, it's great to see you. Let's see. Um, oh, good. Here we go. It seems like everything's scrolling backwards this time. Um, I'm going to come back down here. Okay, Henry, let's see. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Let's see, family and good true friends are most important. Yeah, how you doing, Shane? Yep, absolutely. Rita says, does your job rule your life or do you rule your life? Uh, Shane says, yeah, but does anyone want to hear what I have to say? Yep, absolutely, Shane, go for it. <laughs> I wish the phones, we could actually do the phones. Joseph, thank you for joining us. Uh, Candace, okay, Henry, I'm going to throw this out there so that you can understand why I have political views. I work for the government half of my life. Now, okay is i want to see if there's more to it okay and uh, i would love you to expound on it that would be great local issues matter most yes they do uh, mauricio great to have you on board thank you uh dana hi again and uh let's see good evening everybody from dana uh let's see dana let's see, go through this thread boy thread is pretty interesting dana lee money 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 and the destruction to all life on the planet uh, very potentially, it's, it very is. Money makes the world go round, no matter how in unscrupulous it, it's gained. Absolutely, you're right, it is. That is our, the new God, I guess. 
Uh, Rita, I uh, wonder how many millions the judge got. <laughs> okay, yep, there you go. Uh, Dana, maybe keeping uh, the information from the groundskeeper might would be malice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for the family. Um, let's see. That guy will never see all the money. Monsanto will be will tie the money up in appeals for the rest of the guy's life, and very much more. Yes, very likely. Uh, Joseph, it confirms that we must always uh, be aware of what we do and how we do things, how we eat, and what prof profession we choose. Absolutely right, and it is our choice, not what's been laid out for us. Corporations suspense unless I have no ethics. You know, and we talked about this yesterday, Dana, with uh, Lee, and um, and it is very interesting, you know, the choices that companies can make, um, you know, what they do. It, it depends on how that they want to do things, and and you and dealing with such large corporations, it's it, the the ethics tend to go away sometimes. It's all about protecting the almighty dollar, and of course, the executives. Uh, education never stops. Thank you, Joseph. Um, Dana, they do not see us as humans. No, they don't. No care about killing off our planet, which is why they have secret seed banks. Um, wipe out the population and restart. Um, yeah, it is frustrating. I, I do totally get it. Um, I too totally get it. You understand? You can't even imagine. I'd never do it again. Working for the government? Uh, yeah, I can understand that. Uh, Money is nor my God, I got it. Elmo, welcome, man. It's good to see you. <laughs> Thank you for joining in. Wow. Um, yep, no, nope, money's not my God. I, I get you, Diana. That's absolutely true. Uh, who watches the watchers? EPA, FDA? Absolutely, you know, and, you know, here they, they stack them with corporate owners and um, corporate, corporate executives, so it's really hard. Um, if... If there was something that we could do, if there was actually something that we could do to stop this, what would be the 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 way around it? I mean, obviously, apathy doesn't quite work. I mean, by get, not being involved. But do you believe that things can get just so big and so out of control that there's really nothing that we can do? Uh, let's see. You have to. Let's see. Let me get this. I'm trying to read this. You have to eat. Yep, out, yeah, for yourself. Out. Thank you. Yep, you really do. Uh, Joseph, thank you. Watch out for yourself. Yes, you do have to watch out for yourself. And that is, you know, we are, yeah, yeah, we're responsible for ourselves, absolutely. Of course, we have to deal with a lot of this, the, the products and a lot of the services that these companies do produce. And uh, and that is where it becomes really very difficult for us to, to maintain control of our lives. It, it is very hard because we are subject to uh, a lot of what comes out um, of the corporate world and the political world, of course, which protects a large part of the the, um, the corporate world. Uh, regulation, taxing, finding guidelines. There you go, Dana. Now that would set the, the, the that would set the course. Um, Candace, I think we're there, Henry. Okay, um, getting the word out is, is that what you're referring to, Candace? Uh, in being able to to get get the word out about what's going on. You know, it is it is really difficult to to stay um, on top of stuff um, and realize all that's going on. Um, Shane, companies like Monsanto are too big to fail. We've, as in gov the government cats, um, have let it go on for so long. It would really be hard to stop. Um, not you. I see what you're saying, Candace. Meaning out of control. Yes, we are out of control. And and you know, it's interesting how. Yes, you know, politicians, they get elected. It's, uh, these, these elections are, are getting more and more expensive every time that they run. They spend, you know, billions on these elections. And, and, and of course, this is where they get most of their monies from the corporations. Um, and then, of course, who knows what the dealings are after they've been elected. And, and when, when it comes time for the, the actual, um, for lack of a better term, um, the, the payoffs for providing the legislation that keeps these these companies out of trouble uh, when you you know when when you actually can't even sue a company um, because something that they produce makes you ill or destroys your life and you can't even sue them because they're protected by the government so yes it becomes a real hard issue 
um, Dana, how is this for an idea? If you create a product and don't have a proper waste system, you don't make profit. Uh -huh. If your product is harmful to eat and people uh, cannot make a profit, it's simple. You know, again, being responsible, um, you know, but again, we're dealing with the almighty dollar and that's the new that's the new deity out here is the dollar is is our is the currency and um you know things that are harmful to people things that are harmful to the planet things that are um you know just just harmful in general yeah they just seem to get sent through and as many people as you can actually show that things are harmful we have the other side of the coin where they uh, they just as many people say no it's not harmful it's not a carcinogen it's not this is not the issue and no it doesn't pollute um, and so we're stuck between um, expert witnesses, maybe, maybe that's what it is, that, um, that really run the show. And, and we follow and have to make judgments on this. Yet here a jury does make a judgment and the judge is saying, well, I'm just going to throw it out uh, because of whatever reasons, whether it be a technicality or whether she's just upset or, or made a lot of money. We've got just who knows. But yes, personal responsibility. Joseph, absolutely right. And personal responsibility. Um, you know, I remember in being having been in the corporate world where the main purpose of the company obviously is to make money. That's to make a profit for the for the for its uh, shareholders. Money. It's about the money. And it's not about what is done. It's not how employees are harmed. It's not how uh, customers are harmed. It's not how the environment's harmed. It's bottom line. How much money do we make? Um, Rita says, but the companies do not care about anything but the bottom line. Exactly right. That's that's pretty much it. Uh, they care about the bottom line. Um, start hanging bankers <laughs> by the toes or by the thumbs, uh, Dana. <laughs> and the, the treasonous politician. You know, we we can control a lot of that based on, you know, with, with the ability to vote. But we have so many people who just don't pay attention to what it is. I know that name, so I reelect that person. Uh, you know, again, I I don't remember who it was that said it, um, and I'm sure Brian could come with it right off the top of his head. But you know, I um, I don't I don't know if it was Barnum and Bailey. I'm not sure what it was, but I don't care what you know what in essence was. I don't care what people you know what the news or what the the publicity says about me, whether it's positive or negative, just so long as it's out there. And that keeps you in the limelight. Um, let's see. Shane says, as long as government employees are allowed to take money from these companies, there is no incentive to stop them. That is absolutely true. Saying, Shane, thank you. Uh, Joseph, some companies, yes, but some not so much. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, there are some pretty good companies out there. Uh, personal responsibility is great, but um, but uh, of your misleading and misinformation or misinformed, um, uh, how does one make an educated decision? Again, and I think that's part of what we tried to talk about yesterday under the uh, ethics of persuasion, the ethics of marketing. You're right. I mean, a lot of times, and I brought up the point to Lee, was a lot of times they omit information. And that is probably worse than, than simply saying, well, the product is excellent, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, it, and then, then they kill somebody. But to simply omit information. And uh, we talked about that a little bit last night. Oh, got it. Hang them by their fingernails. Oh, love it. Ooh, got it. Nice group. I like this. Uh, remind me not to upset you guys. Uh, let's see. Dangerous. I'm trying to keep this uh, PG. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. I got, I got, I got the picture. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, I'm not, let's see, Candace. I'm not so against Big Pharma and all the greed that it comes with it. Yep, uh, you know, and they're very well protected because if something happens, you really can't sue farmer, a big farmer for anything because the government has protected them. And this, this is legislation that's gone through that. Yes, we, it could have been stopped by us if we had known it was going on, but they bury these things in, 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 um, in, in bills that are, you know, hundreds of pages thick, if not thousands. And so we never even know what's in the bills half the time. Well, and I remember Nancy Pelosi saying, well, we got to pass the bill so we can find out what's in it, which scares me to death when, when politicians talk like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, pharma, Kansas. Yeah, pharma. And you got to love them. You really do. <laughs> um, Joseph, safety belts. Good, bad. Ah, 
by law, I have to use them. Who is the God regulator? Ah, you know, I, it's it's so hard, Joseph, because, you know, there's studies on both sides that say, yes, it's saved a lot of lives. And, and there's same studies, like I said, the same experts say that it doesn't save any lives. Um, but, you know, whoever started making seatbelts made a fortune out of that because every single car has them. Now, I can't say that it's helped. I can't say that it's hurt because that's the statistics. Again, we don't know. Um, and I do the same thing. Yes, I wear mine because it is the law. And that is that is the way things are. Um, you know, it's like the helmets with, with uh, for motorcyclists. Uh, you know, uh, it's, has it reduced the number of, of serious head injuries uh, for motorcycle riders or has it not? I mean, there are studies on both sides that say opposite, the total opposite findings. So I think, yeah, I think there's a lot of things that that come into question when we when we really deal with this. And yes, somebody's up there being a regulator and becomes the, the, the root of law. And then that there it goes. Um, Let's see. By the way, sorry for that. So don't worry about the typos. Damn, it's okay. I, I, if I don't, if I can't figure it out, I'll try to work around it. It's fine. I believe me. I'm not the speller. Thank goodness for spell check. Um, uh, let's see. What oh, the epipen is just a, just horrible, you know. And again, it's it, does it save lives uh, from anaphylactic shot? Yeah, it probably does. But at what what's the cost involved? I mean, how safe? What's what is all that's going into you when you do that? Vaccines, I think, are the same thing. You know, do they save? Do they not? Uh, it, it's such a, uh, there's so many very uh, volatile and conflicting arguments out there for all of this stuff. Um, and it's really difficult to come up with the truth when you can't get the information. Uh, uh, let's see, what they did with the Epi, what they did with the Epi pen, I meant. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um, it's so important to do our civic duty and pay attention. Yes, Dana, it is. It is our responsibility. And I know the amount of stand up you could probably do to the apathy of people would I, <laughs> probably keep me laughing for weeks. And, you know, and and then the complaints that come in because of the apathy, you know, the, you know, this 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 law came through or this person got elected and and then you'd go down to the crux and well, did you vote? No, I didn't vote. And uh, so, yeah, taking the responsibility, it's it's really difficult to do that. Uh, Dana says uh, Pelosi belongs in an insane asylum. I think she escaped. Uh, she had, uh, to, had to have <laughs> had to have a lobotomy. You know, it's it's really it is hard. But there's so many. Uh, out there, so many people that just are in positions they really shouldn't be in now, and and they've been elected. I mean, we've put them there. I, I, I it stymies me. It it really does stymie. Me. Uh, how do we how do we do that? And I think getting involved in it is right. Doing the civic responsibility is there, and that's being self responsible. That's that's taking on for ourselves, investigating, studying, reading things. Don't just take the word of a CNN or a Fox News. Get out there and investigate it because it's more, much better that 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 we understand what we're doing. I mean, um, I can't imagine anybody out there read the defense budget. I can't imagine anybody out there having read um, um, the UN documents. Um, I can't imagine people having gone through and having read the Patriot Act. Uh, you know, we just simply took for granted and, and accepted what everybody had talked about it. And it's really, really hard to get people to be that involved where they really want to look at it. I mean, I would love them. I would love for them to be. Uh, Joseph says, but it should be a person's choice as long as as it causes no harm to others. And yeah, I agree, Joseph. It's the problem is what happens if it does cause harm to others. And how are you then held responsible for what has happened? Uh, again, that's uh, yeah. The litigation is hard, and, and it really is. Dana Lee says fluoride, arsenic, lithium in the drinking water is insane. Absolutely. Aluminum used in the uh, in, in, in anti, in, uh, anti uh, perspirants. Um, you know, uh, it helps helps um, with the uh, absorption of fluoride and, 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 and allows it to cross the blood brain, brain barrier. So, yeah, there's a lot of things out there that, that we don't understand, or, or some few do. But the minute you go against what um, the norm or what society is saying or what or what the government is, now you're a conspiracy theorist or worse yet. Now, 
because of the rulings in the uh, defense budget that talked about fake news, that now you can be put in jail for spreading fake news, which is actually defined as anything going against government policy. So if the government creates a policy and you don't like it and you complain about it, you are spreading fake news and they can arrest you. They have an open blanket issue based on this, this year's uh, defense budget. Scary. But that was buried in one of the part, one of the chapters I read. Yeah, I read it. And uh, so, yeah, it is really very hard. It, it is madness. Dana. It really is. Uh, you know, it's, it's spraying the skies, you know. And again, you know, we have so many scientists that have talked about the the, the, the hazards that, it, that has occurred. And the problem is we have just as many on the other side saying, well, no issue at all. Yeah, it's not going to be. No, that's it. You know, the, the biggest thing I remember was when uh, Al Gore uh, started the uh, carbon credits, I believe. He started to come, made a fortune out of that. Uh, your carbon footprint. I, I, I always love that. And to keep the, the carbon dioxide levels down, um, uh, just absolutely ludicrous and just absolutely amazing. Uh, I, it, it just stymies me. It really does. Um, you take the uh, EpiPen away and give druggies clean needles. I just can't understand it. I, I, again, Candace, I, I, I'm with you. I, I, I really don't understand the logic uh, behind a lot of this stuff. Dana, I try not to touch this stuff on stage. People don't get it. You know, and that's part of the concerns, you know, bringing it up here too. People don't get it. And um, and they, if, it depends on how much involved in the everyday life and how much they have been bought into, uh, I hate using that term, the Kool-Aid, but in using life and their way that they were brought up uh, to go against and argue this stuff. You know, well, this is the way my dad did it, and this is the way I'm going to do it, or this is the way my dad believed, this is the way I'm going to believe. Uh, it is hard. It really is hard to get people to to really realize that they, they've been programmed to do this, um, been manipulated into doing a lot of this. Um, but I tell you what, it would be a heck of a stand-up. You could do one, a great show with that. Uh, Joseph says, helmets, seatbelts, flu shots, etc. cetera. Um, my choice. Uh, too much power given in the form of safety. Uh, you know, I'm not going to argue with you at all, Joseph, because, you know, safe, safety is a, play, a way to slavery. I th And I think it's more, I think the, the path more to save slavery is the, the, yeah, the laws that are passed that force us to do to do things. I mean, you know, vaccines are, are one of them. I mean, I, you know, to, to throw it out, I mean, I had the mumps when I was a kid, naturally. I had the measles when I was a kid, naturally, which probably explains a large part of this issue here, of why I'm sitting here right now and, and, uh, and, and, and doing this. Uh, you know, I mean, I had a uh, whooping cough. I had... Um, I had all of this stuff, scarlet fever and chicken pox and, and, you know, and I didn't have vaccines. I had, I had the, the, the diseases naturally. And, and I have to question when they, why not just do it naturally? And the argument that you get when, when a, a parent decides not to vaccinate their child to let them get the diseases naturally, they send them to school. And the people that are complaining are the parents of the kids who have been vaccinated. Well, if the vaccines are protecting your child from the disease, what are you complaining about? I don't, again, don't understand that. So let the child get it naturally. I got it naturally. My brother's got, my brother's got it naturally. My sister got it naturally. We all did. And, uh, you know, it's, it's there. I, I, I don't get a large part of the argument for the vaccines. Um, and went into the military and was, you know, I don't know how many shots I got for Black Plague and, and God, just about every, right the right scene, I mean, everything. And so I, I, I don't get the vaccines and, and the reasons we give them to people. Uh, it, it makes no sense to me, especially to children. And now it's being ordered as when they're born, that they're immediately vaccinated. Uh, you know, an infant's immune system is is really what they've got is from their mother and and it's not strong it's weak but from from the breastfeeding which of course is another major issue um you know they get they gain those the the immunities they gain the, the, the their immune system becomes more developed at least according to me 
uh, you know, there's a lot of people agree and there's a lot of people that say, oh, poo poo, that's you're wrong and that's not the way it is. Uh, we have to have cow's milk. I, I, I don't get this, I mean, from another species. So we lose the benefits of all of that. And I think it's very important that we really work with that, understand that and start pushing that. I mean, uh, you know, I don't I don't understand where where society is going. I mean, I, I live in Ecuador. Uh, breastfeeding is a common thing on the buses, uh, uh, sitting in the park, um, uh, you know, just walking down the street. Breastfeeding is a natural as natural as the day is long here. In the U.S., it's like you almost commit a crime. It's it's like they'll arrest you. I I, I don't I don't understand this. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, it stymies me. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Dana says an inferior person in a superior position is dangerous and liable. Like they should be liable. I'm not sure how liable they really are, Dana, but they should be. Um, let's see. Uh, Joseph says the uh, National Defense Authorization Act. Yep, there you go. Yep, I read it. Uh, <laughs> Boring, but I read it and I was surprised what was in it. Uh, I really do. I keep a copy on my, my my computer just to remind me. Shane says, according to my family, my carbon footprint covers the whole house. Uh, I know you, Shane, very well, and and I I I, I have to probably admit that you you probably right. <laughs> and then I've been awake since I was fifteen and still joined the Navy with an honorable discharge. Who knew? Hey. You know, I was in the Air Force for four years. I, I left also uh, uh, honorably discharged. Uh, in fact, Shane was in the military. He's my son-in-law. And um, and Shane was uh, in the Air Force, as was my daughter, his, his wife, um, as was my second oldest son was in the Marines and then the Coast Guard. And my, my youngest is still in the Air Force. Um, so, yeah, we had a we have a large footprint in the military. And, um, it, you know, it's you know, what can I say? You know, this is, this is, this is what we do. Um, a part of this uh, stuff that we talked about the other day on uh, Tuesday, I believe it was, um, about the boundaries and the national, the national pride and the waving the flags and, and all of that that I talked about uh, going through there. Um, you know, the, the control factor of, of how to be controlled. Uh, U.S. citizens can be detained by any federal employee as a terrorist. And you know what? Yes. There it is, and they don't have to have any. So long as it's under the Patriot Act, they don't even have to say it. They can detain you. They'll lock you away in some place, and no habeas corpus. There is no. You don't have to be charged with anything, and you have no right to a lawyer. So it's yeah, it's really kind of hard, uh, and it's tough to realize that this is where the country has gone. Uh, he who gives a little liberty for temporary security deserves neither. Oh, Marie. Hello, Marie. How are you? Thank you for joining in. I must have missed when you came in. Thank you. Uh, Joseph says terrorist branding. Very, yeah, it pretty much is. I mean, they can use it for anything. When you really look at at that defense budget, you uh, you really realize they can tag anything to terrorism, and therefore you go Bilderberg, <laughs> central banking. My, your friend, I, I I got that. I got the sarcasm there, Dana. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> but that's where it's all coming from. Uh, Dana says we are nothing. We are nothing to them but cattle and dollar signs. Yep, and we are. As long as we bring the dollar signs in, we're functional. And if not, we don't need to be here. Uh, we become a liability. Uh, goes to show how old. You're. Thanks, bro. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> yeah, pre all these generation things. My God, baby boomers. You gotta love it. You know. Uh, let's see. Again, it says, my doctor said to let my daughter get chicken pox. So I did. Wow. There you go. Does he still have his license? That's the part I'm kind of curious about. Um, you know, I mean, look, look at all, look at the stuff that we do. Look at the cancer treatments that we have to, we deal with, you know, um, um, I, the logic. I'm just going to go common sense here. I have cancer. And so I partake in two other carcinogens to try to get rid of cancer. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't guess I quite get that logic. I, it just stymies me, you know, and, and they'll take the thing and say, yes, cancer is this, that cancer is in remission or it's been cured, but then 20 years later, you end up with another cancer. Well, I wonder what that was from. You know, again, it's really, it's really hard to, 
to understand all of this stuff and then to threaten the doctor this is the regiment you have to give or we just take your license away and they have no choice but yet they won't give it to their families i mean they just won't simply put their families through all of that uh let's see uh dana let's see dana says go with your gut the intuition is a wonderful thing absolutely james ruffin my friend how are you sir it is great to see you here thank you so much uh, Wayne says, but not all women are able to breastfeed. That that is true. You're absolutely right, and 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 that you have to deal with. Absolutely correct. You know we have to compensate, but I think the norm is they can, and a lot of it is personal choice. A lot of women choose not to do that, um, and so it's you know it again it's it's choice and responsibility. Um, let's see. Joseph says choices. We don't want to lose them for the freedom to decide. No, absolutely, you're right, James. We don't. Um, Dana says, I, I try to raise my vibration. I live day by day with scope, uh, with this, with scope of the future, but no matter what I'm, uh, what I'm cockroach and I mean to kick ass. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, Dana, I, I think I got this one, but no matter I'm cockroach and I mean, you know, it's, we really do have to try. I mean, it's understanding what our vibration is and what we need to do to change that. And a lot of it is stripping away all of this stuff that we have grown up with and believe is part of the norm because it really isn't. It's just us what we, we've been taught. And, and as we strip it away, we do raise that vibration and we get to see the world in its reality rather than the illusion that it all is. Candace says, we are the only living things on earth with, that separate our babies at birth. I can't believe people are offended over breastfeeding in public. Good grief. And I totally agree. I think we're also the only species that actually feeds milk from another species. I mean, it's not that they can't, but that's not what they do. I mean, a, a goat feeds a goat and a cow feeds a cow and, and you know, and, and cats feed cats and dogs feed dogs. We drink, we, we don't use human milk. We use cow milk. I, again, we're, 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 we're providing the, the, the money for another industry. I mean, and that's really what it is. Uh, Dana Lee, the Patriot Act has an expiration date. Okay. And they'll renew it and renew it and renew it. I mean, that's the way they do it. That's Congress. Uh, we need to listen to sages. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Shane, Dana. Uh, Shane says, Dana, they just renewed it, I think. Um, and it's very possible. Well, John, there you are. I've been waiting to see if your name popped up. How's it going? Good evening, man. Uh, let's see, Joseph. Every president has signed it since Bush. It said yes, and, and no, and they haven't questioned it. Nobody questions anything. It is just rubber stamped and goes through. It was that's what the intention was, you know. And and the whole premise. I mean, when you look at nine eleven, and again, I'm not going to say that it was a government ploy, nor am I going to say that it was an Islamic uh, plot or action or mickey mouse caused it but the bottom line the patriot got passed and it's amazing how that document showed up i mean thousands of pages showed up within days i it just blows me um you know think that we have to think uh dana probably uh their instruction um let's see probably their instruction to not be assassinated and that's very possible parker how are you sir <laughs> welcome aboard <laughs> uh, hopefully you, you talk to your dad just a little bit um, um you know i talked to him yesterday he was doing much better than he was doing previously and uh, but he, i know he went for, in for another adjustment i have no idea how he's doing this evening um i have not had a chance to talk to him today so welcome glad to have you on here parker thank you so much uh shane says we just saw a new story yesterday about a company that banks human breast milk for those that can't produce themselves really i well that's cool i did not hear that or I didn't, well, again, I don't, I don't really get into a lot of what's going on in, in up there anyway. But um, uh, let's see. Um, very well, Parker. Thank you. I am doing very well. And I really thank you for asking. I really appreciate that. Wow. This is so great. It's this great family reunion. I love it. Um, you know, there's so much that that is going on out there and we really don't understand a lot of it because we're kept from it. We really are. I mean, when you you realize that, uh, you know, the money that is spent in in getting policies passed in the government uh, and what they bury in these things are so it's so ludicrous. I mean, it just is amazing. 
Um, and But this is the negotiations and the dealings. A politician wants such and such added to a bill because I want the money to uh, go to a bridge to nowhere. You know, I mean, I, I want to be able to provide some construction company a whole lot of money who happens to be maybe be my brother-in-law. And then and there you go. I mean, this is and this has been the way the way Washington is. I, you know, I always believed um, that Congress and senators should not be paid anything. I mean, that, that they, they, they really shouldn't pay that. This should be just an honor to go to Washington, do your job and get back to your business back in your hometown. And, and that's it. Just the way it used to be. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, I get scoffed at quite a bit. But um, but to me, that's really what it is. And when you look at the other benefits that they get, I mean, lifetime insurance, lifetime, I mean, full salary for the rest of their lives. For what? For, for doing a job that should they should not have have had to, been able to do. Um Let's see. I just lost the thread here. So let me see. Um, okay, here we go. I think it just went the other way. <laughs> let me take a look. I pushed back a little fight the end. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Um, where am I? Um, kind of something happened here. All right. What do we have here? Um, we need to. Okay. We uh, I, Here's John. Um, I, it seems like I lost the other thread. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, we need to... Uh, Redeclare our independence this time from uh, from the U.S. torture and war crime state. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. Literally, this is it's gotten way out of hand. Um, Mary says, "Hi, Mary. How are you? Uh, small victories are possible. Great. Okay." Um, Mary Haggerty says, um, "I and I push back lo uh, locally to fight the uh, N NDAA." We, we were able to get local legislation passed that affirmed that sheriffs have jurisdiction over any federal agency for their local citizens. And that is terrific. It's states' rights. I mean, I absolutely go with that. And I think that local communities, I think this is the way it is. We have too much, too much from, from um, uh, power from the federal government coming in and doing, taking away states' rights. And I think that that's a large part of the problem we have. Uh, pretty cool. There are about uh, 10, 8 to 10 across the U.S. right now. I'm, I'm sorry, Shane. I know this is outside of sequence, I think. Uh, let's see. Just saw a news. Oh, there's a news story. Probably the instructions. Sorry about this. I'm just kind of half reading here, going through here. Um, every part is, okay, I think I'm catching them back up again. Wow. Um, only living things. Yep, there's the living things. And so I tried to raise it. Okay, vibration levels. Um, okay, I think this is actually going the other direction. U.S. citizens can be detained at any federal national defense authorization act. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's going now. It's going the other way. Uh, okay. So yes, we are. We are. We are at a whim. We are at the whim of of what the government does. We are at their mercy at this point, and it's not until we figure out how to get the people that are actually in position uh, out of position. Or get them to understand, you know, I guess maybe the best way to put it is when we fear the government, there's, there's really an issue because that's tyranny. It's the government should fear us. And I think that's the part that's missing. There is no fear because they understand the apathy of, of, of us that we don't get out there, we don't do the thing. I mean, again, I'm in, I live in Ecuador. Ecuador requires 100% vote. Everybody in Ecuador has to vote come election time. And if you're out of the country, you better go to the embassy and vote because you will be fined when you get back. So, you know, they take it serious here. And so it's very important that we, that we take a leading role in that. I mean, the U.S. is, you know, I mean, we should be setting the example instead of being a piss poor example. Um, Paula, hi, how are you? Maureen, how are you? Thank you for joining us. This is great to see your names pop up on the thread. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to figure out which. Okay, Joe, okay. I it, go, it goes back to to being informed and always learn. Absolutely, Joseph, it is, and we have to take the responsibility to do that. You know, we. We rely on news agencies to tell us what's going on. They lie. I mean, seriously. I mean, they have an agenda. And 
that is what we're missing. I mean, so it doesn't, to me, it's never mattered whether you were a conservative or a liberal. It does now, apparently, but it never did to me. You simply, you got the, you got the news and you got to make decisions. You didn't get someone's opinion, which is what the news agencies do now. They simply give you some celebrity's opinion or the opinion of whoever's running the broadcasting company. And that is where we fail. We take that as gospel and then that's what is the truth. And, and it's not, it's just their opinion. And um, um, it's, it's, it's 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 so difficult because the the lies and the fabrications of the stories continue and continue and continue. Uh, let's see. Um, Joseph says, "Don't be afraid to say no." Absolutely. Um, question authority. You okay, have to. I mean, there's. We've given them a blank. We've given them carte blanche. We don't question anything they do. They represent us, and it's like we voted. So you go off and you do your job. And then come back and tell us how things are going, and we'll we, we'll we'll just go ahead and, and elect you again. So everything is going to hell in a handbasket. But they come back to the community and say, you know what, everything is great. This is what we're doing, and and I'm gonna and here's what I did. Here's what I did. Here's what I did, and this is what I did, and I did it all for you guys. Oh, good. Then so we'll reelect you. And then they go back to business as usual. Um, the object in Washington isn't to help the people. The object in Washington is to get reelected, and that is the issue and 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 we don't hold anybody accountable i mean it used to be we held their feet to the fire i mean we, we literally did and now it's no longer the way it is uh wayne says there are no news agencies the the minute an opinion is inserted by the news it's no longer news all we have today are tabloids absolutely right bro thank you i really appreciate you saying that joseph no one uh, knows your issue better than yourself. Absolutely true. Yes, that's what places us on the uh, places our best interest and our, you know, us at that highest level. You're absolutely right. Shane says if people if people's agendas were more about the whole than the individual, we would be far better off. Again, Shane, yes, I absolutely agree with you. And I think that that's the thing. I mean, understand in this world, there's eight billion people. You know, and let's how many politicians are in this whole world when you really look at it out of eight billion people, even if there were a hundred million politicians in the world. Eight billion to a hundred million. Who has the real authority? The people do. But the people have been convinced over time and over time, over time that we don't matter, that it doesn't matter, that we don't have that power, that we really have to rely on the the authorities, the authorities, good old authorities. And I think that that's where we have lost it and we bought it, we bought into it. It doesn't matter, your vote doesn't matter because we have the electoral college and that decides what's going on. You know, so why vote? And so in the US, what do we do? On a good election, 30, 35%, a hundred percent vote here in Ecuador. So, you know, I, it's, it's very difficult to let people off the hook from their own responsibility and they're not taking it serious and they have to, they really do. Uh, Joseph says, we have, we have been too willing to accept our neighbor's choices. You know, yes. Um, you know, and the amount of ill-informed people, um, misguided people and they are making decisions for themselves making decisions for their families their loved ones decisions for us and yeah it's very difficult to to do that wow that was a fast hour we're down to five minutes left to go in the whole hour um yes man i love this thank you this was this is great what what a, this is thank you I'm, and i'm gonna we're gonna continue doing this on thursdays uh because i think it's important it's far more important um i think to hear what you guys have to say rather than listen to me go on on and on about stuff and that's why i really do like this this is a much better form and i know for everybody that listens on radio you don't have the advantage of listening to the thread and i apologize i was chopping up what a lot of people were saying so um it is um 
it, I hope you hang in there with us and, 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 and kind of get a feel for what's going on. Yes, it is. It's yes. Thank you, Wayne. It's called indoctrination. Exactly. And, and, you know, and, and the indoctrination into the U S is different than the indoctrination into the, into Great Britain, into France, and into all of the countries that, that we have representatives that have people listening to the show. Every country has its own indoctrination system, you know, and this is why instead of having 8 billion people, you know, working together, we have Germany working against France or working against the U.S. or North Korea working against the U.S. and, and everywhere else, and all of these countries working against each other rather than working together. Again, it's and it's what the politicians want. It's what the heads of these countries want. It has nothing to do with what you want because we don't matter. We simply are a dollar sign. You're right. We are simply a vote. And that is really difficult uh, to sit back and just simply accept. John says, yes, blind followers bowing to the whims of the political parasites. Absolutely right, John. And this is what we do. And because of the way we were raised, um, we can justify that. People can actually justify it, that this is this is the way it is. This is the way my father did, so this is the way I'm going to do it. This is the way my father voted, so this is the way I'm going to vote. Again, the path we're walking down is not our path. If you see that path laid out in front of us, it's not our path. It was laid there by somebody else. And so it's time to step off the path to start doing the things that we need to do. Uh, Joseph says they hold the hands. They hold the hands um, on the space station. Yeah. Yes. Yes, they do. And it's all multinational, which is wonderful. John says the wingers are dingers left and right. You know, it's you know, you see the adage you know, on Facebook several times, you know, the left wing and the right wing. Are part of the same bird doesn't matter left or right it doesn't matter it really doesn't you know it's all part of the same bird all right guys i thank you so much for this evening i oh, man we're down to just a couple of seconds a couple of minutes here thank you uh this is this has been great i really appreciate all of your comments and i thank you so much for your input uh this really does help i mean a lot of the stuff we can bring back up we'll bring up in different shows so i i'm really looking forward to you continuing to give us the the feedback that you need keeps us in our place, keeps us sort of honest too. And, uh, and I like that. So, you know, along with the, the folks up on the space station that are holding hands, I'll tell you what, I'm holding hands with you all too. And I really want to see this happen. See us come through this and see us start to wake up and spread the word. That's the key. Spread the word, get this out to everybody, you know, share this for me and let's do what we can do. All right. Again, thank you everybody. I'll call it a good night. I hope you have rest well. We will see you Sunday evening again from Transitional Radio. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. IPMNation.com.